We're going to pick up on uh, the COVID-19 response now. 36 states across the U.S. are now seeing an increase in daily coronavirus cases. At least three, California, Florida, and New York, now have more than 400,000 cases. The Golden State is still leading, though. It has the most in the country. It's one of many states where testing is a major issue. According to the COVID Project, the U.S. now tests an average of roughly 850,000 people a day. But some experts estimate that number should be around 4 million. CBS's Laura Podesta has more. It's like Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, Tennessee, and Virginia. Dr. Deborah Burke says those five states need to take action to control the coronavirus before it gets any worse. We do believe that there are states that do need to close their bars. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir said he'll introduce new measures today. I will not let us become an Alabama, a Florida, or in Arizona. Florida has the second most cases in the country with over 420,000. <laughs> People in Collier County protested a local mask order. I'm not going to wear a mask to make somebody else feel comfortable. Texas reported 153 deaths yesterday, surpassing 5,000 in total. Over the weekend, hundreds of bars defied a state-ordered shutdown and open for customers. Why do we not deserve the chance to provide for our families like every other Texan does? In Washington, D.C., lawmakers and the White House are split about how to help out-of-work Americans. We are going to be prepared on Monday to provide unemployment uh, insurance extension uh, that would be 70% of whatever the wages you were uh, prior to uh, being unemployed. House Democrats passed a bill in May that keeps the extra $600 a week in unemployment benefits through January. The economy is not going to get better until we have control over this virus. Also in the bill, another $1,200 stimulus check and a four-month extension of the eviction moratorium. Laura Podesta, CBS News. All right, so we want to dig into the facts and the science, and we're going to bring in emergency care physician, Dr. Ron Elfelman. You are in Maryland, and uh, we want to take a closer look at some of the major morning. news, doctor. Good morning. Um, one of the things we're hearing about is the possibility of a vaccine by year's end or perhaps the beginning of next year. Um, we are looking at the first phase three vaccine trial in the U.S. expected to begin this week. What can you tell mm -hmm. us about the process? What do you know about this vaccine? Well, so there's uh, 120 roughly various organizations out there working on vaccines right now. And this is, to my knowledge, the first one to enter into, as you said, into phase three, uh, which is very exciting. Um, it's, it's very promising, and it is a vaccine that will hopefully induce both what we call cellular immunity and uh, humoral immunity. So you basically get antibody production and T cell production both ways that your body kind of fights the virus um, or intruders, in this case, the, the COVID-19 virus. So it kind of hits the virus from both sides uh, simultaneously. And, um, you know, the government has, has a, there's a program called Operation Warp Speed, which the Trump administration started in, I think it was May or April, um, to kind of focus on, on getting a vaccine out by January of 2021. Um, to every American in the United States, um, and or every American, that, sorry, every American, period. And it was a public-private partnership, and there's lots of money being invested to do this. You know, uh, various companies, AstraZeneca got over a billion dollars, Pfizer got, I think, two billion, um, Moderna got half a billion, uh, J&J got half a billion. So there's lots of money being spread around to try to really just get it out there to various companies to try to see who can build the, the best vaccine as quickly as possible. So, uh, Dr. Elfenbein, I have a couple of questions that I'll try to wrap up into sort of one big one. Um, the, the idea of a vaccine, explain to our viewers why there are some vaccines, like the one that you take as a child for measles, mumps, and rubella, that seemingly protect us for most of our lives, and other vaccines, like the annual flu shot, that only protect us seasonally or a couple of times a year. And do we know the, the vaccines that are being developed for COVID, which category that would fall into. And the follow-up I have is, you've got people that are unwilling to wear masks because they believe in junk science. Um, how quick would people be uh, willing to believe that a vaccine is going to work uh, when you've got people that are out there you know, propagating junk science, in some cases like the President of the United States? Um, well, so, so the first part of your question, I think, is, is 
various viruses work differently. So the MMR vaccine is against measles, mumps, and rubella. So it's three viruses that it protects you against. And that's a, 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 um, a vaccine you get once as a child and then probably a, another booster at some point in your life, especially if you're a woman of childbearing age uh, or you're in the military or something, they'll give you a booster. Um, but generally, that protects you for most of your life. Uh, that just has to do with the virology, the way that, that, vir that those particular viruses work. Historically, the other coronaviruses that affect humans, your immunity only lasts up to two years. Various, there's about seven different strains of coronaviruses that we know of. Four of them are endemic to humans. And of those four, I think the longest lasting immunity that you can have is up to two years. Most of them is six months to eight months. So I, I, I don't know, and I don't think anybody knows at this point how long this particular vaccine will last, but my guess is going on historical norms, you're looking at probably only a few months to maybe a year. So you probably need to get another shot or a booster, much like the flu shot. And the reason the flu shot that you need every year is because they're kind of predicting which strain of the flu will will come and, and attack humans that year. It, it, it can vary greatly. So the, the CDC is trying to guess which flu strain is going to be the one that's going to be dominant. And that's the vaccine that they give out. Sometimes they're wrong. Sometimes they're right. Um, but the flu strain changes every year. The coronaviruses aren't going to change necessarily. But the way this virus works, for whatever reason, human immunity to the to the coronaviruses historically has only lasted, as I said, up to about two years and the longest one. So I don't think there's any reason to suspect that this is going to be any different. So my guess is that you're going to have to get a booster every year, every two years, something like that. And your point about the mask is a good one. I mean, we've said this every single week since we've been talking is just wear your mask. You know, people just don't want to do it for whatever reason. God knows why. There's good science for it. There's good data for it. And it's really not that big a deal. Just put the mask on and wear it. Uh, and there was a recent study that showed up to 35 percent, I think, of Americans have, would say that if the vaccine was issued today, they wouldn't take it, which is very troubling and very concerning because obviously we need to get this vaccine ready and get it out there so that people are protected. We got to make sure it's safe. I, I'll grant you that, that people have a legitimate concern. Vaccine needs to be safe and be well tested. But once we're sure of that, I think people hopefully will will take the vaccine. Yeah, and I think, you know, what we've learned throughout this whole time, I think, is that no matter what science does and and all that stuff, there's, the basics are still true that we were told at the very beginning of this whole pandemic. Wash your hands, make sure you wear a mask, try to keep your distance from people. That has nothing to do with complicated science. It's really simple no. and any, anyone can do it. <laughs> and what we've yeah. also <laughs> learned is, you know, sometimes the complicated science can be hamstrung by our inability to just do the basics. Um, so I think about, you know, what we learned about testing is that you can have this, these great testing options, but if you're missing sort of one component, like the swab, which seems like this tiny little thing, then we can't get the test done. And we're seeing more and more that we're having a, an issue with medical equipment, including, for example, the just little glass vials that are needed when it comes to vaccinations. And can we talk a little bit about when we're talking about a massive vaccination push. And it's not only about educating people, but we have to make sure that we have everything, all the components in order to get the job done. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. And, you know, the last thing you would think about would be these stupid little glass vials. There's 10 milliliter glass vials that they can store the vaccine in, right? I mean, who thinks about that? But there's a shortage of glass vials that can contain the vaccine. So, again, the, the Trump administration back in, I, I think it was April or May, passed this this big expenditure called the Operation Warp Speed, and one of those, one of the components of that, was to to encourage companies to to produce more of these 10 milliliter glass vials. And you wouldn't think it would be that difficult, but it's very labor intensive and very difficult to make sure those vials are safe and secure and and sterile, and that they can contain the the vaccine safely. So they they gave uh, 143 million dollars to a company called SIO2 which generally makes about 14 million of these vials a year. But by November, they're supposed to be making 120 million. And the other company that it's going to is, they, I think, $350 million to Corning, Corning Glass Company, which also manufactures these uh, vaccine vials. Uh, it's interesting because one of the tenets of this was this that the money had to go to American companies because there's other German manufacturers, Swiss manufacturers, 
that the, they, the federal government would not give money to because it's outside the United States. So they chose two American companies to give the money to, and they had to ramp up production to be able to meet the demands of almost 400 million doses of vaccine by January of 2021. So, you know, enough to cover every single American. Uh, they, they, you wouldn't, again, you wouldn't think about these little glass vials, but every step in the way from the syringes to the needles to the vials, you got to think about all this stuff and all these things that nobody really thought was be, would be necessary. You, you got to think this stuff through um, and that all, in, in the, all stages of the supply chain all need to be met.